Um, in terms of uh, frontline regimens, one of the uh, focuses at this meeting has been the established role of triplets versus uh, doublets and others in the context of upfront treatment. And what I think we've heard at the meeting in various sessions is the following, that clearly three drug platforms are the standard of care, both in the transplant eligible and the non-transplant eligible. There was a superb presentation by Dr. Jean Blade on behalf of the Spanish group where he described the results of the RVD versus VTD experience in their hands. And what they clearly show is much better tolerability, much higher qualities and overall rates of response. And this has a meaningful impact in this transplant eligible population. So that, to our, in our view, is a very, very important uh, phase three experience to have, but very much validates the role of RVD going forward. I think in the context of KRD, Obviously, carfilzomib constitutes the most powerful uh, proteasome inhibitor that we have. Um, it, the data are clear there, um, you know, that we have a number uh, of studies that have shown um, that clearly carfilzomib-based therapy compared to bortezomib-based therapy in the relapse setting uh, is superior. But a critical question remains, how do you sequence these drugs? And obviously, the studies to date have all looked at bortezomib exposure first, followed then um, by subsequent exposure to carfilzomib. And whilst I think that's obviously key, at the same time, does that mean that necessarily in all patients, carfilzomib should go into the upfront setting? Well, in fact, the data would suggest we have to be careful here. Um, the reality is that carfilzomib in the older patient population can be very challenging from a toxicity point of view. Uh, and in, whilst in the younger, uh, of fitter patients, clearly carfilzomib has been a proteasome inhibitor of choice. Whether or not it should be used in every younger patient up front as part of, say, carfilzomib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone, that's more of a, a question. And I think the reason it's a question is really several fold. Um, one, that as we move into the three and four drug platforms up front, there's data at this meeting where RVD is being combined with daratumumab as an induction remission strategy before transplant, and the results are exceptional. At the same time, there's the critical question of if you've used carfilzomib early, when relapse occurs, what is your proteasome inhibitor of choice? And that becomes a key question, because if you've used your best proteasome inhibitor early, do you put yourself into a position of competitive disadvantage from the standpoint of therapeutic efficacy when you then have to re-challenge with, say, bortezomib? And that's a question we don't know. The other thing that's really the sort of sting in the tail is that the toxicities are importantly different. Carfilzomib is blessed without neurotoxicity. It's generally well tolerated, but in about 20% of patients, there is a vascular signal of a variety of stripes, hypertension, cardiac, renal, pulmonary, and indeed, for that matter, thromboembolic. So when you think about that, um, it's not without its challenges. Um, bortezomib, obviously, the neurotoxicity has always been its Achilles heel. The good news is we've really figured out how to better manage that with weekly dosing, subcutaneous, and lots of supportive care. The other thing is neurotoxicity is not necessarily as challenging in the clinical sense. It certainly can be in the symptom sense, but obviously it's not life-threatening. Some of the cardiac issues that can arise with carfilzomib, whilst fortunately very rare, can be. So you're left with this interesting conundrum, you know, what do you do? Do you use your best gun first, as it were, and keep your gun, other guns in reserve? Or do you use an okay gun, for want of a better analogy, and even have a better gun available if you need it later? And let me explain why I think that's so important. Because if you're using your okay gun up front as part of a four drug platform, say, then actually the power of that weapon up front may not be as vital as you might think it may be because essentially you've got four drugs there and you're looking to minimize toxicity and think strategically. And strategically, if you need your best weapon in reserve perhaps, perhaps there's value there. And so I think that's a relatively simplistic way of looking at it. And perhaps the better way of looking at it is that we define by risk. And what I think will happen is that in the future, high risk patients who may be at particular need of all the best that we have, probably in that group of patients, the use of KRD up front with an antibody makes great sense. For standard risk patients, perhaps you don't have to use all your best weapons and you can keep some weapons in reserve. And the, the final point I close on, which is very relevant, is financial toxicity. The reality is that bortezomib is generic. And so as a partner with other drugs, it, costs, it constitutes a low cost option. 
Unfortunately, carfilzomib obviously is not generic and it, it is expensive. And so as a result of that, these are very relevant considerations for us uh, as we think about which regimen belongs where.